Peggy 18. Sheila de Tanserville. I'd sensed from the start that some dark mystery lay behind that cold countenance. Following the demise of the council and conclave, there was no one left to keep the mages in line. But regicide? Why? What was this all about? It seemed these questions would be answered at Loch Wing, an ancient city amidst mountains, the remnants of the civilization of the Vrans, whose dusk had come long ago. And you would be right to ask, why did you not set out for Loch Muin, Master Dandelion? Your humble servant and chronicler was forced to flee the Pontar Valley, as he very well might have paid with his life for his heroic stand against King Henselt. And to allow oneself to be humbly slaughtered, consigning to oblivion this account of incredible events, would be a grave transgression against the arts and letters. Yet forever feeling a vast, shared responsibility for the fate of the North, I dispatched to Loch Muin my faithful and capable friend, Geralt of Rivia. Have I mentioned his disdain for politics? Well, it was at Loch Muin where he could finally give vent to it. Has Radovid's messenger been by? Yes, sir. And what did he say? Tamaria cannot survive. The kingdom will be divided. The nobles are riled. Constable Natalis stands on shaky ground. <laughs> the loyal old Natalis will get kicked in the ass. How predictable. And they nearly reached an agreement, but without Foltest's daughter, it didn't work out. Perfect. Are the quarters ready? There is a little problem. Then we must look at this problem. There's no door. We can't lock her in a doorless cell. I can see that, you fool. Out of my way! Uncle Deathmold will cast a tiny spell on your little house. Vasa Anem. Nilfgaard's most precious gift. Clear up in here. This is Loch Muin, not a bloody pigsty. Oh, bollocks, Geralt. Marshal Rorpenek was a cruel, bloodthirsty prick, true. But the times were different. He had his men murder every last elf in Loch Muin. For years, Jorveth and his ilk have been using that banner to wipe their asses clean of the shit they do. In wartime, a commander's forced to make all kinds of decisions. It's as simple as that. Yeah, and I'm sure it lay really heavily on Rorpenek's conscience. Bollocks again. I've already admitted he was a prick. Are you defending the Enshe? They've got barrels of blood on their hands as well. With the Vrans gone, we had to safeguard this source of the power, safeguard this historic city. Huh. Elven driven. Heaps of lizard-like bones were found in nearby caves, all bearing traces of sword cuts. Uh, I think what you will. I'm more interested in the city's current inhabitants. Why am I worried you're going to do something really stupid once we get there? Above all, I'll find the cure to my suffering. His name is Deathmold. Careful you don't step in some serious shit while looking for that cure. He will feel death consuming. Or counting wyverns before they've hatched. <laughs> He's no wyvern. He's a rat with no sewer left to hide in. The blue stripes were more than fighting. <laughs> I selected and trained those men myself. True, there were good days and bad. <laughs> they weren't even given the chance to die in combat. You also lost your king, Vernon. Don't forget why you embarked on this mission. I haven't. If Letho and Sheila are in Loch Muin, they'll never leave it alive. Knights of the Order. 
This is the last place I'd expect to see Knights of the Flaming Rose. They're here with Radovid. After losing their foothold in Temeria, they rebuilt their position at the Redanian court. You best stay out of sight. You never know with those bigots. Yeah, we also had a little disagreement recently. They could be holding a grudge. I'll explain that your presence in Loch Muin is necessary. What now? What can we expect to see in the city? Separate camps, buffer zones, and frequent patrols. Well, that's how it should be organized if those mages from the Conclave have any sense. Ah, another area of your expertise. The Peace of Sintra was signed on April the 2nd. And all around was quiet, calm, and orderly. If you don't count Hensel's rules and the all-night festivities of the Mahakam Volunteer Army. And the common folk were positively thrilled with the parade that followed. Yet, not one of those fuckers even knew that I, and a few others like me, spent a week poring over the city map and devising a way to keep those crowned idiots separate, just in case one decided to deal the next blow in a long-standing feud. In any case, I hope to see something similar here. Relax. The mages want royal gold. They'll make sure all the sources of financing remain alive and present, at least until the inevitable quarrel over the Pontar Valley breaks out. Well, we'll see if there is indeed a way where there's a will. If we're separated, we'll meet up again in the main square. Fine. Halt! Who goes there? Vernon Roach, in the service of the Kingdom of Temeria. Pass through there. One more thing, the Witcher Geralt of Rivia is with me. I trust you'll let him pass if it turns out. We're to let Foltest's killer through. I'm after the real murderer, as Geralt will put me on his trail. If you say so. None of our concern. To marry his internal affairs. Bolt, who goes there? Geralt of Rivia. I'd slaughter you like a dog if it wasn't for Vernon Roach. I'm not a Kingslayer. I don't care if you killed Foltest. You stood against us, and the Order never forgets. I remember you from Vizim. I don't believe you killed Foltest. I didn't. But a bounty is a bounty. I'm sure you understand. As a professional, <laughs> it's nothing personal. <sighs> One more windbag. Commander. You've got shot us for brains, you bumpkin. Aye, sir. At ease! We all serve the Emperor, be it in Nilfgaard or here. Semper Fi! We serve him faithfully and effectively. If anyone gives me reason to doubt this, I shall skin him alive. I ready for your chat with Radovid. No reason to delay it. Follow me then. Halt! We're here to meet King Radovid. Have you been granted an official audience? We have information about the Kingslayers. Everyone knows the killer is the Witcher from Rivia. Then everyone is wrong. Not my concern. I cannot risk placing the King of Redania in harm's way. We bring Radovid news that will strengthen his position during the talks. Care to risk his wrath? Besides, this camp is swarming with soldiers. We'd have to be stupid or suicidal to attack Radovid. Hmm. Pass, then if your news is so important. But one word from the king and you'll hang. Both of you. Don't you worry about us. Temeria stands little chance of surviving if Radovid has made terms with Kedwin. Even less if he's made a pact with Nilfgaard. He and the Emperor could divide the entire north between them. I'd take pleasure in seeing Kedwin picked apart. But they'd start with the country deepest in chaos. 
so you'd best hope nothing of that sort has happened. Did you request an audience with the King? Yes. The King will receive you. Geralt of Rivia. Your Majesty. As usual, you turn up where and when you're least expected. And in such company. I never thought they'd make a soldier out of you. Vernon Roach is a friend. He's in uniform, sure. But that's meaningless. The world has changed greatly since we met those few months ago. Temeria stands at the brink of civil war. Kedwin has taken the Ponsar Valley by force, and a Nilfgaardian delegation plays a prominent role at the summit of the Northern Kingdoms. Voltest and Demavend are both dead. Though it seems we were signing treaties just yesterday. Why did you bring the Knights of the Order here, Your Majesty? The Order of the Flaming Rose is here to ensure that the talks remain peaceful. We wish to avoid a second Thanet. What's the delegation from Nilfgaard doing here? Hensult invited them. Shillard Fitzestelen would never miss an opportunity like this one. He'll come to the talks and stage his favorite drama. I've come here for help, Your Majesty. Wait, Witcher. Were it not for you, Hensult would have perished at the hands of an assassin. Am I right? My reputation precedes me yet again. From soldier to soldier, from whores to barons, Right up to the royal ears. I killed a would-be assassin. Pure coincidence, I just happened to be there. Things like that oft seem to happen to you. Enough about Hensult. You said you needed help, Witcher. Tell me more. If Temeria is in turmoil, then who has arrived to represent it? Constable Natalis, the hero of Brenner, which is good. His presence is like a slap on Shillard's face delivered by the North. Has King Henselt arrived? <sighs> He's been talking about his great victory at Vergen ever since. Sheila de Tanzerville is behind the murderers that hit Temeria, Edern, and Kedwin. How do you know? I found one of the assassins after Henselt's murder. Before he died, he revealed de Tanzerville's role to me. Why you in particular? The desperation of a dying man. If you say so. It all makes sense. Shillard Fitzestelen warned me about a plot. Apparently, Triss Merigold confessed to him that the sorceresses had set up a secret lodge. Triss is working with Shillard? She's been detained as a suspect. Shillard believes the sorceresses of Nilfgaard were also part of the conspiracy. Luckily, the entire amphitheater is under a spell that quells any magic. Otherwise, no one would dare go near all those mages. Well, the talks beckon. Everyone wants to see Temeria's bitter end. What do you mean by that, Your Majesty? The nobles are rebelling in Vizima. Lacking a ruler, they simply want to divide the kingdom into provinces. Temeria separates the north from Nilfgaard. In the hands of local barons and warlords, it will be nothing more than a means for the Nilfgaardian cavalry to gain momentum. Hensult wants Redania and Kedwin to partition it. For shame! I have no choice, unless we help each other, Witcher. Anais, the daughter of Louisa and Foltest, lives still. After the Baroness's rebellion, the girl was captured by the Nilfgaardians. The child has become a bargaining chip between the Empire and Kedwin. My people tell me Anais is here in Loch Muin, in Deathmold's hands. I cannot mount an armed attack on the Kedwenis. It would be tantamount to declaring war, and we have gathered here to maintain peace. A lone witcher and a former soldier. That would be a different matter. Bring me Anais, Geralt, and I'll salvage a united Temeria, and punish those whose hands are stained with the Temerian King's blood. Why does Deathmold need Foltest's daughter? 
Hensult is pressuring me on the subject of partition. He firmly believes he's pulling all the strings. The girl is most important, Witcher. I denounce our engagement and make her queen of Redania and Tamaria. The nobles of Vizima would greet her on bended knee, and the North would emerge stronger than ever. I must attend these talks, Geralt. Time is short. Bring me the girl, the two of you. Men without country or commander. Renegades that no one seems to have taken into account. I, in turn, promise that Shilla de Tanzerville will pay for her deeds. I shall punish her with fire and steel. An alliance with Redania is our only chance of preserving Tamaria's independence. It's still risky. Anais, she's the key. I still wonder about Boosie's death. The boy would have had a stronger claim to the throne. Maybe Anais can tell us something. What do you it's high time we visited our old friend, Deathmold. The Emperor's men hold Triss. They'll get everything they can out of her, after which she'll be dispensable. If it's between the Sorceress's life and Tamaria's future, then I've no choice. I'm sorry. This is no place to talk. Let's wait till we're beyond the gate. Just the person I'd be looking for were I not forced to seek Anais Lavalette. You have much to explain, Brigida Paperbrock. Oh no. You'll not pin this on me. I trusted you and you sent me into a den of vipers. Vipers! Another mess. This is no time for pleasantries, Geralt. Calm yourself, Brigida. You were to watch Voltaire's children. I saw nothing dangerous in the task. Obviously I was wrong, but I need your help. Anais has been kidnapped. Boosie is likely dead. I need to know how this happened. I need to know the details. You knew well what you were getting me into. You know that entire rotting bunch. The Count, the Baron. Not half as well as you do, my dear. Who were those men? Not so fast, Roach. I have been hiding in this city for three days, scurrying about like a rat. They're hunting me. I'll not let you leave me here. What do you propose? Escort me out of the city, to the river. What will that get you? I expected I would need to fend for myself. I've secured passage. Take me there, and I will tell you all. It's a long way. You've a traitor in your camp, Roach. Perhaps more than one. What happened to Foltest's bastards is no series of coincidences. It's the result of a clever, treacherous game. Damn it all! Geralt, I need to look to Anais. Learn how we're to get to her. But Brigida might know what happened to Boosie. Thus far, we've heard nothing but rumors. Take her to the river. All right, Roach. I'll help you this one last time. I'll search for a back way into the Kedweni camp. You're forgetting. I came here for Triss. Whatever you decide to do later, so be it. But a traitor in the Temerian camp threatens us all. Escort Brigida, learn what you can. I'd thank you, Roach, if you weren't such a shit. I'm counting on you, Geralt. Brigida must get to her destination safely. Good luck, Roach. Which way are we headed? We shall leave Loch Muin through the Order's camp. We won't be bothered there. Then we'll descend the mountain path and go onto the river. Who knows what we'll find? Expecting someone. Does it matter, Witcher? I did mention the vipers. Blessed be the man. eternal Marathon fire. Marathon Kimbolt. In its radiance. men. Important in the Temerian camp. Oh, and mentioned them. I guess I have them to thank for an interesting chat Roach and I had a while back. Nothing well. Too early to pry, Witcher. I'll not let you pick my brain and abandon me. The main path leads to the right. That's where they're likely to be waiting. Roach would say they'd be waiting along both paths. Roach, Roach, Roach. You're with me, not him. And I decide for myself. I've agreed to meet someone on the riverbank. We'll go through the wood. Calm thus far. Your dear Roach seems to have been wrong. You two have a history. Or do I have it wrong? He asked a favor of me. I was to stay with Foltest's children, watch them, travel with them if necessary. Child's play, the bastard called it. That's how I wound up in the caravan transporting the children to Loch Muin for the summit. Hmm. Yeah, that clearly went sour. Tell me more. Soon enough. We've just got to make it through the forest. It's a short way to the river beyond that. 
It should be calm. Let's go. It's not far now. Redlin awaits down by the river, at the end of this path. Is Redlin another of Roach's contacts? No, a smuggler. I'd be looking for another way out if he were Roach's man. Stay behind me. This is the smuggler I spoke of. This was the smuggler you spoke of. Someone's coming. You'll not sail off, you whore! Kill her! Not have survived on my own. Talk, woman. You've dragged me far away from the city. You owe me an explanation. Who were those men? Who have you been hiding from? I... I don't know. Three days like a rat, you said. And you don't know. I knew. I mean, I had my suspicions. So talk. Who's out to kill you? I don't know. There you go again. Truly, I cannot be sure. At first I thought it was revenge for the children, but he knows I'm no traitor. It's not Roach. We both know that. Yes, yes. You're right. Tell me about the Vipers. They... they created this storm. Are they working together? I would say they detest one another. Or oh, that's what they wish everyone to believe. The devil only knows. What does Baron Kimball want? A strong Temeria. And a strong North. He's obsessed. He believes we're surrounded by rebels and traitors. The Lavalettes, the Marabels. He's probably not alone in that belief. But he is alone in believing that he himself is the remedy for that ailment. The Baron sees himself on the Temerian throne. He claimed he would achieve this by marrying Anais. Isn't she a little young for him? He's a disgusting old setter. He'd be a tyrant were he to don the crown. You know what the Count intends? No, but I cannot imagine anyone more different from Baron Kimbolt. Meaning? I would call him a sheep were his heart not black. He's a jester, an especially nasty one, though I cannot identify his master. He may not even have one. Seems you got to know the Baron and the Count well. Then there's Roach. Pretty interesting social life, I'd say. Being a courtier, that was no life for me. I thought it terribly dull and found a remedy. Searching for excitement shouldn't get you killed. It's the last time I do anything of the sort. You can't be sure of that. Is Vernon the only person you do favors for? I've never betrayed Tamara, if that's what you ask. What happened to the convoy carrying Anais and Busi? What about the children? We were ambushed. The caravan was destroyed. I need details. We were traveling along the agreed path, with a limited escort so as not to draw attention. The children were in two separate wagons, a safety measure, I was told. Which one were you in? I was with Anais. One day a messenger appeared with orders for the caravan's commander. A change of plans. We turned north to travel a longer route for safety's sake. Soon after the turn-off, we were attacked. were killing everyone indiscriminately. One pulled me from the wagon, but a bolt pierced his neck. It was mayhem. I ran for the bushes and hid. Did you see what happened to the children? The driver of Boosie's wagon was shot. The horses got spooked and ran off into the forest, taking the wagon with them. When the fighting was done, they found an enemy still in her wagon. I turned away for fear of what they might do. They nearly grabbed her and fled. Any idea what happened to the caravan commander's orders? I have them. After they took Anais, the bastards were in a hurry. They didn't even think to search the corpses. Take them. Thanks. Sure you can manage that boat? I must. I'll not return to the city. Thank you again, Richard. And follow this through. 
You do us all a favor. Ah, Geralt of Rivia, I am delighted to see you among the living and the free. Are you serious, Count? Such an injustice to lock you up without so much as a hearing. And then the beatings, the torture, it's barbaric, I tell you. Based on pure prejudice, the presumption of guilt. Actually, if I'd seen what they saw. Uh, but alas... Such is my homeland, filled with fear and thus ruthless, cold as stone, dark and severe in aura and mindset. I suppose there's some truth to that. A response at once cautious and reasonable. Admirable qualities in and of themselves positively required in your profession. If you say so. But tell me, Witcher, what brings you here? Are you nipping at the heels of Foltest's killer, close to beheading the wretch, as I expect is your style? Do you require my assistance? I just have some questions, Count. Well, ask away by all means. I am finding you a skilled, if slightly reticent, conversationalist. Does the name Brigida Papabrock ring any bells? Rings bells, sets off whistles. Why? I believe my loins have grown warm. Touch my plums, touch my plums. Excuse me. Fruit, Witcher! Especially fruit of the south. Tender, juicy, soft on the exterior. That's what I think of when you mention Dame Brigida. The woman is positively obsessed. I was hoping for a straighter answer. A man of your experience surely understands what I mean. Hmm. So you admit you know her well? I know her, I have known her, and I expect I yet will, and I'm not alone in that. Though, mind you, I admire the woman. Her kind of ambition is rare, among both genders. Ever taken advantage of that? Ever asked her to run errands for you? One must be careful with the ambitious. They are almost always running their own errands. Asking them to do yours simply invites them to use you. Baron Kimbolt learned that the hard way. But why ask me about the lass, here and now of all times and places? Surely, given your close allegiance and, no doubt, many a shared drinking binge, Commander Roach has told you all. Commander Roach can be strangely discreet. What do you know? I'm hardly one to tell another man's secrets. Indulge me. Ugh. If you must know, the rascal Roach rogered our dear Brigida, just before he passed her off onto me, among others, with a purpose in mind, I suspect. He'll be interested to hear what you had to say. My, my, aren't we dutiful? Brigida used Baron Kimbolt. Continues to, I surmise. To what end? You cannot expect me to answer every little query that pops into your mind, Witcher. I've got to say you stand out, Count. I'm flattered, I suppose, but what specifically do you mean? I haven't quite put my finger on it, but take a look around. Would you say you resemble your countrymen? I thank the gods I do not. It is because I love my homeland that I am the first to note its faults, and they are many. Care to elaborate? Hypocrisy? Superstition? Lack of learning? Need I go on? If you wouldn't mind. Take you witches, for instance. The gods know we suffer a plague of beasts. Pre-conjunction, post-conjunction, magically bred and sprung from rotting marshes and the dark abysses of our land. No such thing as pre-conjunction creatures. Uh, you bite unnecessarily. We have but one remedy for this plague, dwindling in numbers as it may be. Yet it is a remedy we revile. You are shunned spat upon, turned away on stormy nights. Would you say this is reasonable? It's the way of things. Spoken like a true representative of a dying species. What brings you to Loch Muin? Concern for my country, Witcher, and an express and somewhat surprising request from Constable Natalis. Surprising? How so? Surely you jest, Witcher. Truth be told, few could marshal loyal forces matching mine on such short order, Baron Kimbolt accepted. 
Yet, though I very much held Foltest's trust, I cannot say that many of my Temerian peers feel the same way. Why do you suppose that is? They resent me. I share neither their customs nor their beliefs. Where have we met? I believe there's been a misunderstanding, my lord. Get out, before I call my guards. And what might I convey? Nothing. Baron, sir, you gave your word. For the last time, out! Tend to this matter. Baron Raven and Kimbolt, I presume. Does that witcher's code of yours exempt you from court etiquette? Does it grant you the right to speak to the Highborn without being asked to do so? I guess I don't need to introduce myself. Oh no. I know who you are. Geralt of Rivia. Foltest's other favorite hound, alongside Roach. Not purebred. They say you bring trouble wherever you appear. Who was that thug I passed in the doorway? He's of no concern to you. People like him sometimes do stupid things. Did I ask for your opinion on the matter? They're gonna re-establish the Conclave. Didn't expect so many Temerians to show up for the ceremony. We're not here for some magic pomp and circumstance. This is about celebrating a new order in the Northern Kingdoms. Is that so? Your kind doesn't understand this yet, but your life is about to change. Forever. My kind. Wanderers and scoundrels. People, and I use the term loosely, without loyalty or country. People for whom coin is the law and everything's for sale. What'll happen to Temeria? Is that a note of nostalgia I hear in your voice? Remembering your service under Faultist or recalling some romp in the sack with the royal advisor? Whichever it may be, spare me your courtesy. You don't care a lick about my country. You're right, I don't. Now that Foltest's dead, you'll tear Temeria into bits. But luckily, I just don't give a shit. Funny, because you sound as if you do. The convoy carrying Anais and Busi was ambushed. Why? I'd like to know that myself. I've seen your letter to Horst Lubbock, the one in which you ordered him to abandon the planned route. Nonsense! I sent no such letter. The letter bears your seal and signature, Baron. Where is it? That's immaterial just now. If that's the situation, I've said all I have to say. I wrote no such letter. Words come cheap, Baron. I'm finding it hard to believe you. I care little for what you believe. If this letter exists, we are dealing with a forgery. Whoever is behind this has crossed a Temerian noble and will be duly punished. My scribe will test the letter and confirm what I claim. All right. I'll see what this scribe has to say. There are objective means of examining the letter's authenticity. I promise to pay you well for learning the truth. Hmm. The truth does taste better when payment's involved. Water quenches lime? Like beer He's drunker than a bard. Won't get anything out of him. Maybe there's something about testing letters in his notes. Calling me sauced? Nah. Water quenches lime? Like beer quenches thirst. The king of reagents? According to the scribe's notes, if this is Kimbolt's letter, the paper it's written on was treated with an invisible dye. An activator should bring out the dye, turning the paper blue. Now for the activator's formula. Better try it on some drafts first. 
I need to make the substance that will bring out the dye and apply it to the letter. A little burnt lime. A bit of water. Everything's better with a dash of bird guano. Wait for it to dissolve. I need to add burnt lime to the flask, then quench it with water. Add bird guano to that, heat it, then capture the vapors and run them through cold water to obtain the final substance. All right, let's try this on Kimbolt's letter. Wait for it to dissolve. Smells like piss, but it worked. The sheet's orange, not blue. The letter's fake. Kimbolt had nothing to do with this. You were right, Baron. The letter's forged. Of course I was right. I would never seek to hurt Boosie. Bastard or not, he is still a child. Your payment, Witcher. I want you to look into another matter. What would it involve? Count Linus Maravel. You've heard the name? Young. Capable. Handsome. Yeah. Yes, yeah, all that and more. And he's ambitious to a fault. Right after the Temerian delegation arrived in Loch Wien, his people began visiting the Nelfgaardian camp. Regularly. Are you suggesting Maravel's a traitor? We are all entitled to communicate with the Ambassador without chagrin and openly, as court and diplomatic protocols allow. Yet the Count's multiple messengers, the letters traveling to and fro, Reminds me more of a complicated courtship. You're curious to know the content of those letters. I want you to learn the Count's plans. A man would sell his mother to please the Emperor. Find out what Maravel's messenger is carrying. If treason is involved, you must alert John Metallus. You will be generously rewarded, I assure you. You need a Witcher to do this? Do not underestimate Count Maravel. He does not employ common scoundrels, and I don't intend to either. Hieronymus Lash. Sound familiar? A pretentious invented name. Belongs to a bard or a mummer, I'd say. But you wouldn't need my help with either of those. So I'll venture a guess. Merivel entrusts his correspondence to a mage. I knew you were suited to this task. The magic barrier placed over the city mutes all forms of high magic, preventing Lash from contacting Schillard remotely. He nevertheless remains dangerous. During the times of the previous conclave, I believe he was caught practicing black magic. He faced execution, but that Laos Maravel saved him. How do I locate this messenger? Look for my man Aldridge by the fountain here in the camp. He'll point the mage out to you. All right, I'll look into it. My lord, we know where they are. What are your orders? Bloody wonderful day. Assemble your men and resolve this once and for all. Gather your gear. We're off to hunt, Slayer. You've charmed the Baron, but that don't mean I trust you, Wanderer. Remember that. Master Witcher! What do you want? My lord, the Right Honourable Count Maravel requests the pleasure of your company. He says it's urgent. Seems like everything is these days. Tell the Count I'll think about it. Aldrich, Baron Kimbolt said you'd point Hieronymus Lash out to me. Perfect timing. Come with me. Where's Lash? Patience, mate. They should be here any minute. There. I've done my bit. Up to you now. We've got a tail. Stop him. Stop there, white one. What if I don't? Then I'll fucking help you! I'd like to see you try. Consider it done! Ah! Enough! You shall die. Here and now.
what's so urgent, Count? Ah, oh, etiquette is not your enemy, Witcher. It would not hurt you to embrace it at times. In any case, I could not help noticing you circulating in and out of Baron Kimbolt's quarters. Yet I wonder if you are fully aware of the kind of man you serve. What do you mean? He cuts a fine figure, doesn't he? The heavy cloak, the silver mane, the booming voice. Yet our worthy Baron is hardly the saint he makes himself out to be. A lot of that going around recently. I am in possession of certain information that might interest you. Mm -hmm. And you want to share it because... We come from different worlds, Witcher. On the surface, we are as unlike as wraiths and wyverns. Yet, no matter our preferences, culinary, political, erotic, ultimately we both are interested in and tirelessly seek one and the same thing. The truth. You can talk, Count. I'll grant you that. But I'm not convinced you can be trusted. Baron Kimbold also offered me the chance to learn a certain truth. I don't think I need to say who about. And you are certain that Kimbolt can be trusted? So far, all the Baron's words have proved true. Well, then I merely ask that you verify mine. You are not the sole person to have repeatedly visited our kind-hearted Baron recently. Doesn't seem strange to me, given the time and the place. He has also had some more troublesome callers, blackmailers to be specific. Now, I'm not handing down any verdicts. Perhaps the Baron has some personal problems, in which case I would very much like to help him. Get to the point, Count. My people have learned where these blackmailers are encamped. I assume Baron Kimbolt has not been sitting on his hands and has also dispatched his huntsman to find them. A horrible man. I know who you mean. Ran into him in Kimbolt's quarters. Then you must also know that if you do not make haste, nothing will be left of our blackmailers, save some rotting corpses. I shall show you where they have their camp, and I merely ask that you learn what is at issue. Naturally, you can count on my gratitude, though we both know that is not the greatest reward. I can't promise you anything, Count, but I'll think about it. Farewell. What do you want? I saw you talking to Kimball. <laughs> I'm free to go where I please and talk to whoever I please. Couldn't agree more. Now you're here and you'll talk to me. I'm interested in the Baron. I've naught to say to you. Not good, because I need to know everything you know about him. Baron Kimball sends his regards. Oh, just what we needed. Leave us, Witcher. Since when does a witcher take orders from a huntsman? Since that witcher stopped hunting monsters and started poking his nose into others' affairs. Sometimes the stench is so strong you can't help but catch a whiff. Aye, well spoken. You've some common stinking thugs here, and I'm to teach them some humility. A ponds like you? Pucker up and kiss my arse, you fucking tulip! These folk have nothing to say to you, understand? I'll be the judge of that. Lend us a hand, witcher. You'll not regret it. I'll need to know everything about Kimbolt. God, this is shit! Enough of your jabbering! Kill them all! <sighs> Thanks, Witcher. We'd be corpses if not for you. Yeah, seems likely. Now don't make me regret helping you. You're welcome to all we know about Kimball. I'm all ears. We came here to collect our fee, me and me brothers, for a favor we did the Baron. What did you do for him? Spent four days in a forest, sitting on our asses. Baron Kimbolt wanted to pay you for that. Of course not. We was to destroy some wagons in a caravan that was to pass through Millville. Problem is, caravan never came round. I can see why you're having trouble collecting. Kimball had shy information. How is that our fault? That bugger lost us a right lot of time. And you know what they say, time is coin. What exactly were your orders? We was to watch the high road for a caravan carrying nobles. Two coloured wagons and a small escort. The wagons, they was ours. All inside was to perish. Any idea who was supposed to be in the wagons? Two high-born young'uns and their nannies. That's all the Baron told us. Willing to tell Natalis all this? I'm to fess up! They draw and quarter me! You didn't do anything. Took a job, that's it. They can't prove you actually wanted to complete it. If you refuse, Kimbolt wins. He'll squirm his way out of this, but it won't end there. 
the Baron's got gold enough to hunt you till he hunts you down. Not likely. I'll see them tear stripes off his back with hot pincers. All right, I'll talk to Natalis. I found the Baron's blackmailers. And? Did Kimbolt knock up a peasant girl, a healthy one at least? Unfortunately, it's a national matter, not a personal one. May I know its essence? As a statesman, matters pertaining to Temeria are of the utmost concern to me. It looks like Kimbolt hired this group to murder Anais and Busi. Thank the gods they were only half successful. Hmm. This group didn't kill anyone. The convoy carrying Foltest's children changed course. It never arrived where our blackmailers were waiting. I know the Baron. He approaches things comprehensively. He must have enlisted a second group which accomplished the terrible deed. Whichever way you cut it, Kimbolt's a traitor, pure and simple. Oh my, must have hit the old man pretty hard. The Baron doesn't know yet. What are you waiting for, Witcher? Make haste. You must deliver the evidence to the Interrex. Actually, I was hoping you'd do that. I need to tend to some other matters. Knowing the constable, I fear he would look upon any accusation I made with distaste. He could very well assume I was merely trying to subvert a natural rival. He might see the evidence as doubtful, even fabricated. But we cannot allow a traitor to play an important role during the summit. Yeah, I guess we can't. Besides, to witness the fall of the Honorable Baron Kimbold, I don't know if I could bear it. I gotta admit, Count, your clearly feigned concern for Kimbold, well, makes me wonder. Yes, I suppose it must. Goodbye, Witcher. Whoa! Roach may trust you, but I'm not so sure. What do you want? Representatives of the Council of Regents. Did any come with you? Only Baron Kimbolt and Count Marival. The other five remain in Vizima. It seems that save Baron Orval, most spend their time trying to devise a way to undermine Anais's claim to the throne. Kimbolt and Marival. What's their stance? Well, they've taken opposing positions, as one might expect. The Baron believes Anais's origin, if you will, stands in the way of her taking the throne. Though it's common knowledge that he would simply prefer to seat himself on it. Whereas Marival has said that Foltest's children have his full support. He stated this in Vizima before the entire council. One thing is certain, words come cheap. Those two may change their minds in a flash if Anais is found and recovered. There's a traitor among the Temerians. Careful, Witcher. You'd better have evidence if you plan to accuse someone of treason. Boosie and Anais. Yes? Count Marivelle outright betrayed Temeria, while Baron Kimball planned to murder Foltest's children. Those are serious charges. Kimbold hired some thugs to do the wet work for him. I found them, and one's ready to testify. They never got the job done because the convoy carrying the children changed course, only to fall into an ambush set by Marivelle. The Count wanted to hand Anais and Busi over to the Milf Guardians. You'll find the proof in this letter. Busi's death was an accident. Dark clouds gather over Temeria. I cannot arrest them both. Their contingents are among the largest in Loch Muin, and I cannot risk mutiny by their men. Thank you, Witcher. You did well to bring this matter to my attention. I only hope Baron Kimbolt will agree to stand with me. So you see, Baron, I have learned all. And it makes me sick to think about it. However, you may count yourself fortunate, for we've a greater problem to deal with. You shall provide me with your full support as we arrest Count Marival. This plea sounds more like a threat to me, Constable. It is no plea. It is an order. And yes, a threat. Refuse, and the Council of Regents shall receive ample evidence of your crime. Of your wish to slay the children for whom our King gave his life. What are your terms, Natalis? Upon returning to Vizima, I shall destroy the evidence against you. Prior to that, however, I expect your unconditional support. How can I be certain you will do as you pledge? My words still mean something, unlike yours, you lying, rotting son of a whore. So be it. But heed this, Constable. Do not try to cross me. The mages will want to get as much as they can out of this summit, 
and monarchs don't generally like others dictating terms. This may end in a row. There will be no row. The mages now rely on the mercy of the northern kingdoms. The amphitheater itself is also protected by an anti-magic shield, like the one used at Thanid. The times of mage impunity are gone. They will be shown their place. Impressive summit, but not all the players have their representatives here. The most important do. The mages thought about inviting everyone, but time is short. I've seen an Elfgardian delegation. Scandalous as I see it. They're here at Henselt's bidding. Before long, he'll be inviting them to his war councils. How are things? You're either very unobservant or very rude. I thought I'd meet some of my colleagues from years past, chat with them and reminisce, but they all turn their heads away and treat me like a hen. Mages aren't known for being polite. You're telling me. They threw me out of Bannard the first chance they got. Must have beaten the Chancellor one too many times. They've all forgotten me and I believe I've had enough. I'm getting rid of the grimoires and amulets. I don't want anything to do with mages. I'd like to cast an eye at those if you don't mind. Sure. Cast both if you want. Anything on the Wild Hunt in your collection? I'd avoid the topic altogether. Nothing good has ever come to those who have delved. I'll take my chances. I need to know why the wraiths carry off youths. What happens to them? This knowledge has never been recorded. Which does not mean it cannot be acquired. Well, I'd like to acquire it. In the chasms beneath Loch Muin, there is a sword that once belonged to an elf from the parallel world. And nobody's gone to look for it? There are mages who seek it still, but the sword is well concealed. They say he who handles it will understand the essence of the wild hunt. Could that be true, though? I'm Geralt, Brass of Bannard. I remember you from Thanad. I believe I saw you in Oxenfurt, too. Seems we only ever meet on Elvenland. Indeed. But I suspect you're not here to chat about Elven ruins. On the contrary, I find Elven ruins interesting. Do you really? Elven works are not half as interesting as gnomish ones. But even ruined, Loch Muin is impressive. It must have been beautiful in the times of the First Conclave. Everything was better before the war, as they say. The sources. Those children that old Geoffrey Monk brought here to train in the magic arts must have walked around gaping at all they saw. Somehow I just can't imagine Hen Gedimdeeth as a small gawking boy. You met him? Ah, right, on Thanet. His death was a terrible loss. Terrible. You see, Geralt, everyone complains about how the world is taking a turn for the worse. Values are being compromised. The small is dislodging the great. Exactly. But the events on Thanet truly marked the end of an era. The world grew up, losing its virginity in a rape. What use are masters of magic and legendary heroes to a grown-up world? They're of no use. That's the point. Today, people manage perfectly well without mages, witches, and heroes. Yet not everyone understands that, and not everyone likes it. You're so clever, you'll get in trouble. We'd best change the subject. <laughs> Actually, I'm here because of your weapon expertise. I'm no expert. You're the best swordsmith among mages. I'm more interested in the cultural relics of other races, actually. I'm going to need a solid cultural relic in my hand. I guess the circumstances require haste. I'm interested in the wild hunt. Any chance you know something about it? Uh, <laughs> no. Birds are not exactly my speciality. I came upon this strange manuscript. Think you can help me with it? Hmm. Why? Yes. I don't believe I'm mistaken. Do you realize what you hold in your hands? A mage told me it's the key to an ancient ritual that summons evil specters who otherwise wander the earth doing no good. Specters apparently willing to make deals. Well, the mage was full of bilge, so to speak. You see, the Vrans knew well how to secure their treasures. It is said that in some places they left sentries. Now, these sentries come to life when someone draws near who possesses a scroll inscribed with words of power like this one is. Provide the correct password and the doors to a hidden vault open before you. So how do I use the manuscript? Ah uh ah. -uh. Nothing comes free.
You needn't even know the meaning of the words for the sentry to let you pass. You must merely know the sequence in which the password must be read. In this case, we have a sentence. Nana kanpa zi udu ya lala gat exa nana zi udu zi gat kanpa nibit. Nana kanpa means forge ahead, while nana zi means backtrack. In summary, should you encounter a sentry who reacts to this scroll, you must first answer with the words that follow Nana Kanpa in their given sequence, then omit Nana Z, and conclude with all the words that follow this phrase, but in reverse order. Not that complicated, actually. Thanks for your help. What do you want? You're not in the Kedweni camp? Those Redanian pigs tricked us, as usual. They took the best buildings, leaving us the rat-infested ruins. It's better out here in the square. A right good show. Messengers running back and forth, delegates grinning at each other while thinking of slitting each other's throats, and lots of gold changing hands. A lot of armed men around. The kingdoms are trying to look menacing. People like me will soon have work to do. Nice to meet an optimist. Really raises the spirit. The mages are making a country fair out of this summit. They're parasites who'll stop at nothing to get into the king's treasuries. Hence it'll quickly beat it out of their heads. He doesn't like mages standing up to him. He'll tell them to stuff those treaties up their arses. You know they want to appoint royal advisors. They're also going to discuss what to do given the assassinations. Aye, a new world order. You know the drill. I see all those cowardly petty knights and bloody mages, and wonder where the human race is going. Forward. Blindly, down a steep slope. But for now, the clip of air is more fun than it is terrifying. I remember you. Welcome, Chosen One. Who are you? The Ancients vested my soul with the task of operating their most prized artifact as a means of rewarding those proclaimed Chosen Ones. How exactly does the artifact work? It allows me to rectify certain errors of the past and enhance the skills of the Chosen One to render him closer to how he would wish to be. However, remember, all things in nature have their price, and this price varies. Are you ready? Something tells me I'll do fine with the artifact on my own. You blind, greedy fool. Die.
guard the camp like it's the Emperor's treasure. Yes, Your Excellency. Let so much as a flea slip through, and you shall pay with your heads. Look who's here, the Rivian Witcher. Greetings. Our paths cross often, it seems. Too often. What do you seek here? Triss Marigold. In the Nilfgaardian camp? Fistek has addled your brain. Uh-uh. Lower your sword, son. You've got cheek, Geralt. Let's go. Get One false move under. and your ambassador will never see Nilfgaard's son again. My men won't let you leave here alive. They will if you ask them to, Excellency, and I believe you will. Reynold Ebb Madsen's orders come from the Emperor himself. He'd rather die than give you medical. Then he'll die. Mark my words, you will. Unless you release me, it's not too late. You're boring me. Pick up the pace. Why do you care for that sorceress so much? Go. Are you in love with her? A poor choice, even for you. That cuts no ice with me. Out of the way, all of you, or the old man dies. Hold there! I'm not joking. I know. And I advise you not to hesitate. Kill him. For we shan't move one bit. Renoir! He who brings me the Witcher's head will get the Order of Merit. But Ambassador Fitz Estelin. Your Excellency. Orders from the capital. Now I'll have to kill you all. What are you waiting for? Get him! Congratulations, Witcher. They were my best men. Free Triss, or join them. You amaze me. How can you risk your life for a witch? Let's just say we're close. I knew it. You're in love with her. You wouldn't risk your neck otherwise. But you don't know everything about her. What are you talking about? Your friend and the other witches conspired against your rulers. You lie. You think it impossible? Triss was loyal to the crown. You're a fool. That's what happens when tits take over a man's mind. I don't believe you. That's irrelevant at this point. During our chat, my people managed to regroup and call for reinforcements. Maybe now they'll start fighting like men. Time to show you. True power. Surround him!
see me. Are you kidding? The only person you expect to see in a Nilfgaardian dungeon is the Executioner. Did they torture you? They tried various... things. But they got nothing from me. When I left Flotsam with Vernon, I somehow doubted I'd find you so soon. I know it was hard on you. I'll never forget this, you hear? Never. I'd slaughter half the Nilfgaardian army for a friend. I know you're a member of the Lodge, Triss. How do you know of the Lodge? Does it matter? I also know the Lodge was behind Demavan's assassination. Geralt, I... I trust you. True. I'm a member of the Lodge. Just like eight other sorceresses. But if you think I'm responsible for the Lodge's actions, you're badly mistaken. The Lodge is a theater for two actresses. Sheila and Philippa have long dominated it. To the point where you didn't know about the murder they planned? To the point where I was no longer invited to gatherings. Why? They stopped trusting me. Because you didn't agree with them? Nine women very rarely agree on anything. The actual problem was that... <sighs> Tell me. I was close to you. If Sheila fears anyone, it's Geralt of Rivia. The Lodge did everything to convince me that our relationship didn't bother them, even that it suited them. But they manipulated me. Through me, they fed you select information. Depending on the circumstances, they twisted facts. We're still close. They could still be doing it. Don't insult me. Calm down, Triss. Reynold Ep Matson claimed otherwise, but I'll always take your word over that of some Nilfgaardian lowlifes. Now, you'll tell me everything you know. I need to learn the truth. All existing councils of mages disintegrated after the Thanad massacre. We all acted separately. Philippa decided to create a new organization, a secret one this time. When I was sworn in, it never crossed my mind that the Lodge's plans would soon become secret to its members. As you know, Philippa's not one for minor undertakings. She presented a plan for creating a powerful state controlled by sorceresses. No wonder the kings are opposing the sorceresses. Nobody likes a schemer. Philippa and Sheila never lacked ideas or enthusiasm. To control a powerful state, they needed to create one first. Or find a wealthy land with a suitable political arrangement and an easily manipulated ruler. Sheila chose the Pontar Valley, Demavend, and Stennis. Demavend hated mages. No more than Henselder read of it. Sheila and Philippa saw Demavend as the weakest ruler. His son, Stennis, blows hot and cold. Plus, he who controls the Pontar Valley controls the north. So it was in Eden that a popular rebel emerged preaching the idea of a new state. At one of our meetings, I just asked how they imagined overthrowing Demavend. That was the last time I was invited. After Demavend's death, I became suspicious but had no evidence. Philippa brushed me off. When you went off to meet Yorveth and Sheila was busy with the Karen's carcass, I managed to scan parts of her megascope. That's when I learned that Sheila had dealings with Letho. Why didn't you tell me? I wanted to. We never met after that. Letho must have shadowed me when I entered Sheila's room. Then he forced me to teleport us to somewhere near Vergen. Did you talk to him? He wasn't aggressive. In Vergen, he told me that Sheila commissioned them to assassinate Demaven. Them being the witchers of the School of the Viper. Sheila helped them prepare the assassination. I wonder why he told you about it. Is that important? Conspirators who suddenly divulge everything. I'd be suspicious. There was some interference as we teleported to Edern. I emerged intact, but pretty battered. I knew Philippa was in the area. I decided to go see her and lay my cards on the table. Maybe Letha wanted just that. I met a woman at Philippa's house. Thought she was just a servant or Philippa's lover. Before I could speak, I was overpowered by spells. I hardly expected an attack. The pain I felt as my body was compressed. It's indescribable. As if all my bones were being broken. It's even worse when you return to your true form. In any case, Philippa had no idea her lover was a Nilfgaardian spy. I was carried as that figurine all the way to Loch Muin. Asira decompressed me back just before they murdered her. Shillard interrogated me but learned nothing. If it wasn't for you, they'd have had me quartered. I didn't piece the puzzle together until I was here, in the dungeon. Now you know everything. 
Did Saskia know the Lodge's plans? She didn't even know the Lodge existed. Philippa told her that the sorceresses would support an independent state in the Pontar Valley, no strings attached. A fairy tale, but Saskia bought it. Saskia backed Philippa, and the people backed Saskia. Ever find out what Sheila was actually doing in Flotsam? I find it hard to believe she went there just to kill a monster and earn a few orans. You're right, of course. It had something to do with Letho and the Scoyatel. What did she want from Yorvith? The Scoyatel were Saskia's trump card. I expect Sheila needed to know what the elves would do, given that a war with Hensel was practically inevitable. Who had Foltest assassinated? I have no idea. Perhaps after Demavan's successful assassination, Sheila and Philippa decided to take the next step. That would be stupid. Killing Demavan was a way to take control of the Pontar Valley. People would forget the regicide in a year, and the Lodge could put its plan in motion. They had to know that if Foltest died, men like Roach wouldn't rest until they learned why that had happened. One thing is certain. Letho killed Foltest, and Sheila was working with Letho. That'll have to do for now. We'll learn more at the talks. You're going to attend? You have no memory of how the world worked before the Thanid Massacre. Actually, I know exactly how it worked. That means... We'll talk about my memory later. All right. If the Council and Conclave still existed, kings wouldn't be assassinated and massacres would be less frequent. This is our chance to restore these institutions and we shouldn't miss it. Normalizing relations between the rulers and the mages who advise them is our only chance for peace. And our only chance to dismantle the Lodge. The Lodge will disintegrate anyway. Once the Kings learn it was behind the assassinations, they'll start a witch hunt. We can prevent that from happening. I'm all for punishing the guilty, but can't abide collective responsibility. I'm ready to go and reveal everything I know about Philippa Eilhart, Sheila de Tanserville, and their schemes. Let's go then. Those Nelf Guardians, that's your work? They followed their leader too blindly. You killed them all? They didn't slaughter themselves. We shouldn't arrive at the same time. Let's split up. The Lodge remembers too. Rest assured I won't let anyone compress me again. Some of the sorceresses will be surprised to see you. Watch them closely. Don't worry, I'll manage. See you at the talks. All right. Surviving son of a cunt! His cocksucking motherfucking majesty! Excuse me? Oh, <coughs> pardon me, sir. I meant no offense. Hmm. You're leaving the deliberations. Why? Hanselt! He used to have all Edern where to live in a cat when a yoke! Scandalous. No one opposed him? None! Radovid drools for Tameria, and will let that lout have anything in exchange. The North will never be the same again. I must return home. Farewell. Roach had murder in his eyes. He wanted blood and couldn't care less that it was royal, that this was what Letho would have wanted. The death of a king is the triumph of chaos, civil war, famine, fear among common folk, a time of disdain. That is the only reason Henselt remains alive and Kedwin grows stronger. Thousands of Kedwenis live better lives because their ruler is an amoral, ruthless son of a bitch who stands above the law. Whether you like it or not, John Natalis, Tameria will be divided. For the good of the entire North. The united forces of Kedwin and Redania will end the fighting among the Elder Houses and secure peace from Gorsvelen to Elendor. Tameria has yet to speak its last. Vernon Roach, commander of your Fallen King Special Forces, was responsible for today's massacre in the Kedweni camp. Has he been captured? He fled. Our people are on his trail. Lesser incidents have culminated in war, Constable. Roach acted on his own behalf. This illustrates precisely why Temeria cannot be left to fend for itself. The result would be anarchy and chaos. To the matter at hand. 
The document describing the charter of the Council and the Conclave is, as previously ascertained, an exact copy of the charter found in the ruins on Thanet Island. The more important question relates to the Conclave and its power to designate royal advisers. Today, randomly chosen majors and sorceresses reside at many courts. However, in the time of the previous Conclave, such persons were carefully chosen. Why shouldn't we pick our own advisors? These individuals bear great responsibility, Your Majesty. The Conclave needs to be certain they are competent. And that they will keep the Conclave's interests in mind. <laughs> Obviously, sire. The Conclave's chief interest is the well-being and prosperity of the Northern Kingdoms. The document has been signed by every member of the Conclave we have proposed as well as by all but one of the designated advisers. We await only Sheila de Townsville's signature. Without our royal seals, you should be allowed to designate advisers to Cowherd at most. That is true, Your Majesty. Sheila de Townsville should never be allowed to sign this document. Triss Merigold, you decided to join us after all. De Townsville has royal blood on her hands. She can't sit on the Conclave. That is a lie. Have you anything to support these claims, Mary Gold? There are witnesses who will confirm that Sheila de Tanserville was behind the assassinations of Demavend and Foltest. Officials of the future Council and Conclave. Sheila de Tanserville should be arrested and tried. If Triss Merigold speaks the truth, Lady de Tanserville will be condemned to death. <laughs> Sheila de Townsville, until Triss Marigold's charges are dismissed or refuted, you cannot sit on the conclave. Arrest her. You don't know the whole truth. Marigold doesn't know what she's talking about. I've already managed to stabilize the portal. You've got nowhere to run. Sooner or later, somebody will find you. I prefer to leave on my own terms. Where's Letho? Sir Synthesis will tend to him, as she will to all the fools who get a hard on at the mere thought of burning a sorceress at the stake. Where is he? I don't know, fool. I've been looking for him since Foltest's assassination. Letho cheated all of us. We were deceived by his dull face and sluggish stare. Don't you understand? The Lodge sought a way to get rid of Demavend, that's true. He was a weak, volatile king. Edurn would eventually choke to death under his rule. We chose the lesser evil. He had to be eliminated, and Letho happened to be at hand. Voltest? Henselt? 
We had nothing to do with that. After assassinating Demavend, Letho used our gold and magical support to find and meet Yorven. The elf was to help him hide until the matter blew over, or so I thought. The Lodge did not condemn Foltest to die. Then who did? Nilfgaard. Letho is the King of Liars and Emperor of Traitors. From the start, he worked for the glory of the Great Sun and the White Flame dancing on the graves of his foes. He lied to everyone. Me, Yorveth, your stupid little Triss. And you. Got any evidence? A moment ago, I received a message from the Lodge's agent in Sintra. The Imperial Army is on the move. They're fording the Yoruga now. Do you think the North can defend itself in the current situation? But can you count on another miracle at Brenna? I don't know, but you made it all possible and you'll answer for that. The stigma of treason is yours for all time. We shall see. For no one will leave this city alive. No one will tell this story. Philippa controls the dragon. As soon as I disappear, it will turn the city into a flaming tomb. The dragon attacked Foltest's troops during the siege of Lavalette Castle. That hardly supports your tale. We did not control it then. We may have lost a battle, but the war is just beginning. You, however, shall not take part in it. This is your end, Witcher. Farewell! Something's not right! The diamond! Someone replace the diamond! This one's flawed! Are we torn to fish? Geralt, remove it! You waited long enough. Should you survive, go south, to Nilfgaard, where you'll find Yennefer of Vengerberg. Farewell, Witcher.
Are you all right? More or less. And the dragon? Let's say it had a hard landing, impaled itself on a tree. Did you kill it? It's alive. You know I don't kill dragons. But Philippa's... In time, we'll deal with her. You know, that could be one of the last dragons alive, a noble and beautiful creature. Let's get out of here. I guess Letho got away. He's waiting for you. Waiting? Hmm. Where the Temerians made camp. Come on. What do you mean, waiting? How do you know? Utter chaos broke out after the dragon attacked. I tried to reach Philippa's quarters. A terrified man approached me in one of the alleys, gave me a letter and begged me not to harm him. He said it was for you. The letter was short. I'm waiting in the Temerian camp. Letho. What happened here while I was gone? All the kings had many more armed men than they should have had at a peace summit. During the evacuation, several skirmishes broke out. The Kedwenis clashed with the Temerians. The Order's knights raped two sorceresses and killed those who dared try to help them. Do you think the Council and Conclave will survive? Well, they're established, and that's the only thing that prevented a wholesale massacre. Hard to say if they'll survive, but for the time being, no one's got any better ideas. Mages are part of this world, whether people like it or not. They have to have their rights, their place. Otherwise, another lodge will arise. Vernon Roach! Step away from the child. She's of royal blood. Temerian. Too good for you, Horsons. You're an outlaw. Wanted in all the north. Hand over the child and perhaps the king will show you mercy. I piss on Kedwenny mercy. Roach! Triss! We can't let them have her! This is Falter's daughter! I've heard enough! Grab them! I failed. Deathmalt got away. Thanks, Geralt. Triss needed my help. You know that. The Nilf Guardians outwitted us all. What are you talking about? They kidnapped Triss. The Emperor dispatched the Kingslayers using the Lodge as a decoy. All in order to breed chaos in the Northern Kingdoms. Temeria is lost. Radovid and Hensolt will divide it between them. They've signed the relevant treaty. It's not lost. Temeria will be reunited. Get the child out of here. Take her far away. Far from the kings, their courts and their wars. One day, she'll reclaim her heritage. What about you, Geralt? I'm going after the Kingslayer. A man of his word. It's personal now. Farewell then, White Wolf. I trust we'll meet again in better times. Farewell, Roach. Where's Yorvith? How is Yorvith? Proud, I think. The reward on his head has never been greater. Those seeking him, the Scoia'tael hunters, will be reinforced. The special forces throughout the North will receive more resources. The Council and the Conclave are assigning several mages to the task. Yorveth is now public enemy number one. They won't rest until they find him. This is no place for witches. Though I know you, and you appear wherever something important happens. True, though sometimes by accident. And this time, also a coincidence? Let's say I have something to take care of. In that case, hurry. Once we're done cleaning up this mess created by the Royal Soldiery, Loch Muin will be magically sealed. Getting out of here? Temporarily. We shall return soon enough to rebuild the city. Loch Muin will regain its former glory. Until that time, we need to keep the treasure hunters and troublemakers out. So Radovid trusts you? We shall win His Royal Majesty's trust by delivering Sheila de Tanserville and the other traitresses from the Lodge. That could take a while. Sheila's fled Loch Muin via Megascope. We have time. She cannot hide forever. Sooner or later, she will be ours. Forgive me, I must attend to some matters. And don't dawdle. The city will be sealed in one hour. There he 
is. Wait for me. Geralt. I don't want you to get hurt. I can take care of myself. Not this time. I need to talk to him alone. Wait for me at the city gate. If I'm not there within the hour, leave without me. Took you a while? Is that bobble from Sheila's Megascope? Mm-hmm. My final prank. I switched the diamonds. The one in the Megascope has a flaw. Minute. But just large enough to warp the teleport. The Emperor's magic theorists assured me the effect would be spectacular. I let her escape. You're heartless. You've no idea what the royal witch hunters have in store for her. A lot of pain for a long time. I don't doubt it. So, ready to lay your cards out on the table? No matter the game, there comes a point when all the players need to show their cards. I love that moment. But first... Vodka. I suppose my throat's a little dry? In that case, let's drink to old friendships. <sighs> Recovered your memory yet? Not entirely. Remember how we first met? Yeah, I saved your life. Couldn't think of a nicer way to pay me back? Frankly, I couldn't. I mean, taking care of another man's woman, Yennefer. I can't fathom what you saw in her, but I suppose there's no accounting for taste. The Winter Solstice 1270. Midinvern, the Night of Magic. Letho wasn't lying, the hunt had stopped. At the hanged man's tree, the spectral riders selected from among those they had taken. Yennefer was among them. A wraith cannot be killed, only driven away. Every witcher knows that. Yet the riders fell beneath the blows of our witcher's blades. Crimson blood flowed from under their dead men's armor. We could not kill them all. They were simply too many. A stalemate. He was different from all other elves. There was no shame in his gaze. He had never suffered persecution. He had endured no massacres. Humans had not taken his land. This elf was not of this world. He was an invader. We struck a deal. My soul for that of Yennefer. He agreed without hesitation. Back with me, friend. Got the feeling you left for a minute. Memories. I remember the hanged man's tree and the wild hunt. I remember the exchange. Me for Yennefer. So, cards out on the table. Unless you chase me all that way just to kill me. I chased you for lots of reasons. You owe me some explanations to start with. Let's say I do. Why are you still here? Why did you wait for me this time? I knew you wouldn't give up. I knew you'd pursue me. And I don't aim to hide anymore. Fact is, only you know the truth about me. Well, and a couple of folks whose word isn't worth spit anymore. I never saw you as a foe. I want to go my way. But if I have to fight you first, so be it. This story ends here and now. Can you tell me what it was all about? Hmm. Kill as many rulers as we could. Lay the blame on the sorceresses. Breed chaos. Prepare the north. Soften it before the invasion. And you know what's incredible? We could not have imagined more fertile soil. No matter what the war's outcome, the northern monarchs will accuse one another. Pursue their God-given rights. Seek vengeance and be at each other's throats for years to come. The north resembles a whorehouse on fire. As your friend Dandelion would say. How did a witcher agree to kill humans at another human's bidding? At the Emperor's bidding, Geralt. 
and he's no ordinary human. The rulers of the North come up to about where his Pauline's end. Why? Simple. He promised to rebuild the school of the Viper. The Witcher's Order where I came to be. Witcher's schools in the South fell into ruin long ago. And Witchers themselves became internal exiles, banned from entering most cities. Besides Seret and Ox, I know of two other Witchers of the School of the Viper who should be alive and on the path. I don't know where they are. Haven't seen them for years. Now they can come out of hiding. They can come home. Tell me about Yennefer. What happened after I departed? She was feverish for several days, delirious, in agony. We thought that was it. She was on her way out. Somehow she recovered. But even then she was disoriented. Amnesia like you. What then? Well, the woman turned out to be quite a character. Throwing temper tantrums. Trying to seduce Ox. Trying to drive a wedge between us. After you so nobly sacrificed yourself, we thought it'd be dumb just to leave her somewhere. She wouldn't have survived more than a month. The whims and vigor of a duchess, but she was just a sorceress with no memory. We were in the heart of the Empire. And as I'm sure you know, Geralt, in Nilfgaard, Mages who behave like that either drop their bad habits quickly or are drawn and quartered by horses in the middle of Victory Square. So I heard. So we set out, wandered through the provinces. Everywhere we went, she got in trouble and we pulled her out. And then one day they captured us. The Imperial Secret Police. Me, Ark, Sarit, and Yennefer. Imperial Secret Police? Mm-hmm. We were separated, and they questioned us. Long and thoroughly, but it was uneventful. No violence. That's how I met Vatia de Rido. And a couple of weeks later, the Emperor himself. Me. A simple witcher. What happened to Yennefer? I don't know. Never saw her again. The Emperor offered me a mission in the Northern Kingdoms. As for Yennefer, I had the feeling she was somehow important to Emir. As I see it, they learned of the Lodge from her. Those Imperial spooks have their ways. All I heard is that Vatier had his men watch Yennefer closely throughout the time she was at the palace. Then we went off to slay the kings of the north. And that's where my knowledge ends. So she's in the Empire? She was when I left. How did you know where we'd find the Wild Hunt? Every Witcher who wears the Viper around his neck knows the place. We had so many books and scrolls about the hunt that I used to think our school was founded for the very purpose of solving the riddle of the Spectral Riders. Know who they are. You know the true identities of the Riders. From what I understand, they're some damn elven race. But they turned out to be a big ruse. The legendary omen of war proved to be a fairground attraction. No Market Square mage could possibly conjure up a cavalcade of wraiths speeding across the sky. Then there's the amnesia. No, there's something more, I assure you. Go ahead, enlighten me. I can tell you want to. There are a lot of legends and myths about it, but the Wild Hunt is a fact. I've fought and killed many of its wraiths. They were spectral emanations, the avatars of real riders. The riders we ran into by the Hanged Man's Tree. Are you telling me you were carried off by elves? Real material sons of bitches like the ordinary kind we deal with in this world? They may be ordinary in their world, but they're strangers in ours. The conjunction of spheres, know the theory. Do you know how monsters appeared in our world? There's not a Witcher who doesn't know that. So you know there are other spheres? 
The most powerful of our mages can open passages between these worlds, and they usually do that to summon the monsters we then have to hunt. The elves we saw come from another world, and they weren't summoned. They found the way on their own. It's not exactly easy, so they usually send their spectral emanations. They come in person on special missions. As they did for you and Yennefer. Mm -hmm. So elves for another world and their trained wraiths. What did they want from you? I've got an idea. But that's not your concern. I'm done talking. Let's finish this. Wanna fight? Any vodka left in that bottle? A swig apiece. Here. The Imperial Army is probably crossing the Yuruga as we speak. Pure pandemonium will ensue. The North's finished. Time to go south, where the good life awaits. You're a fool, Letho. Both you and your Emperor are forgetting one thing. Misfortune brings people together. Very shortly, the North could be united like never before, thanks to you. But that's just not my concern anymore. I'm not your foe. I never was. Let me walk away and I will. You'll never see me again. Force me to fight, and this time I'll kill you. I've learned all I wanted to know. I can feel the memories coming back. Your death won't change a thing. Go where you will. Just like that. No threats. No words of wisdom. Are you going or not? <sighs> Farewell, Geralt. The Witcher had traveled far and wide in search of the Kingslayers. In Flotsam, he slew Bernard Lerida, but few mourned for the Commandant. Flotsam remained to Marion, while command of the garrison in town went to a Vizima noble, a sworn enemy of Kedwin and an avid angler. To this day, folk gather round bonfires in Lobenden to hear of the Witcher's deeds. The Witcher witnessed a great Kedwini victory in Edirn. At Vergen, Henselt's army crushed Saskia the Dragon Slayer's motley force, ending the springtime of races. Soldiers of the Unicorn swarmed over the Pontar Valley. As it had before, powerful Kedwen swallowed Upper Edern whole. Yet subsequent events would render Henselt's triumph short-lived. Dark clouds had been gathering over Temeria since Fultest's death. Stripped of its king, the land was like a rich cloth which nobles began to shred. These minor scavengers, however, scurried off in fear when true predators reached out for their prize. The summit at Loch Muin sealed the fate of Fultest's realm, 
when Radovid of Redania and Henselt of Kedwin divided it between them. Years before, Geralt of Rivia had witnessed the fall of the council and conclave of mages. The summit in Loch Muin re-established both bodies. Their founder sacrificing Sheila de Tanzerville and her accomplices. Yet Radovid also required humility and loyalty from the proud mages, but this did not sit well with all of them. It was a time of great uncertainty, of rape accomplished by royal decree. Yet as troubled as the day seemed, we, who had in some way shaped the world's fate, finally received some respite. Zoltan resumed the quest for his beloved's hand, and I laid my head in the laps of the muses. Who could have known this tempest which had ravaged the north was but a harbinger of darker days, and the preamble to an entirely new tale of Geralt of Rivia?